Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to, to focus on define text macros. So define uh, is a compiler a directive that runs before the code is compiled. And what it does is it basically replaces um, the text that is defined with something else. So to give you an example, let me create a simple uh, num numerical I define, define my number will be five, and then let me let me do a quick um, quick module to put our test code in. Initial, begin, end, and all we're gonna do is we're basically going to display my number. You notice that I added a tick uh, in front of my number. So basically what's going to happen then is the compiler is, uh, before compiling this code, the preprocessor is going to run, it's going to notice that there's a define for my number, and then everywhere it sees tick my number, it's going to replace that with the number 5. Uh, so let's see it in action. Remove that issue there. Okay, you see this is 5. Um, okay, so you can do numbers. What other things can you do with um, this uh, compiler directive? Well, you can do lots of other things. For example, you can do strings. Hello world. Can't spell today. Let's, let's display my string. Let's run it. You see five again, and uh, hello world. So you can do strings. You can even do um, arbitrary arithmetical operations. Let me define another one. Add two plus two, and here we'll just have two plus two. And we can display this as well. And uh, what it's going to do is because it's a search and replace type of operation is going to replace add 2 plus 2 here with 2 plus 2. So effectively, uh, let's see what else it's going to display. It's going to display the result, which is going to be the same as if we did this. If we just put 2 plus 2 in the display. Now we should see two fours, exactly the same. Um, so we can do numbers, strings, arbitrary operations. Well, it turns out you can even do um, something that's very close to a function um, by using parameterized macros. Let's do one. At 5, uh, I'm going to add the parameters here to this macro. Let's say result and source. And if you want to have a macro across multiple lines, all you have to do is add a backslash and now the macro extends to the next line. So this macro is going to be result equals source plus 5 and then we're going to do a display statement just for fun inside add 5 macro and I'll print out the scope just so we can see what the scope is. Um, now before I do this add 5, I'm gonna add uh, two, two numbers here. Let's do 7 to 0, A and B. We're gonna set A to 1 and then we're gonna call this macro. Add 5 and the result is gonna be B and A is the other parameter and then we're going to display the results. A and B. A and B. Alright, so let's see what happens. Okay, I didn't add uh, another, another, uh, another one here. Malport statement at five. 
ba. Perhaps it didn't like the semicolon. Okay, that was it uh, because I already had the semicolon uh, back here. So you see a is 1 and b was just a plus a plus uh, 5. So another thing I forgot to mention earlier was that uh, the reason why why are we adding all these defines outside outside our module? Well, that's because the defines um, get get run get processed before everything's compiled. So they're global in their nature. So for example, if I put a define, say I create a simple task here, my task, and I move this define here into the task. And then just so something happens in that task, I'll do a delay here and task. So that so it seems like the defines in the task, but be, but it's actually global in nature, and it gets processed uh, from the start of the file until the end. So on my number here will still display five. As you can see, displayed five here. Now you might think, well, can I add it anywhere? Well, it turns out that you can't. Uh, macros get processed sequentially, so if the define happens after it is used, then this is going to throw an error. It's actually throw the warning. Uh, it assumed it was null. Okay, let's move it back up. Okay, the next thing I wanted to cover uh, was another thing you might see that's used with the defines is an if def statement if def like this so this checks whether um, a certain a certain macro is defined so for example if def add 5 and we know we define it up here so this is gonna it's gonna be true and here we'll just call it again um, actually let's just move this up here If def and then we'll do we'll do an else else display no at five and then we'll close it with an end if so these are the, these are the two that you can use if def and end if and then if you want an else you can also use an else like this so we know at five is defined uh, let's run it and we basically see the same result. Now, what if add 5 was not defined? Um, let's say, let's change this to add underscore 5. So we know it's not defined. Then when I run it, we, are, we get the no add 5 message. Um, now, what you can do, and what's often done for features of a chip, is to define a macro, but don't specify any value for it, like this. Define my feature, and then use that in your code to control these types of if, if, def, else, and if statements. So if, def, my feature, we're gonna, because my feature is defined, we're gonna add 5 here. Um, and besides that, you don't have to put the define in the file. You can actually put it on the command line. So here we have compile and run options. So Icarus Verilog uses the following syntax, dash d, and then you can, you can set the define, my feature in this case. And you'll see that it's actually going to get picked up. So when we run it, you're going to see add 5 over here. And just for experiments, let's say, let's change this. To my features. Now my feature is not defined anymore. We have instead my features. So we're going to hit no add 5 in here. No add 5. Um, okay, thank you. That concludes the today's episode. Thank you for listening.